Little Santa Anita, aka LSA Canyon, is a perfect beginner's canyon located in Sierra Madre, California. This canyon has an easy and straightforward approach as well as tons of rappels, yet none of them are too high, so this is a perfect place for beginners to practice. For most of the year, Little Santa Anita is considered a Class B canyon. However, after torrential downpours or rainy seasons like we've had this year, LSA can become a Class C canyon pretty quickly. If you're running this canyon during Class C conditions, you can expect swift water, heavy waterfalls, and even some hydraulics. Thankfully, all of the anchors were still in place on this run, but we did have to do things a little bit differently in a couple of spots just in the name of safety, and I will point those out. The approach will have you climbing right around 1,055 feet as you make your way across a bridge and several switchbacks. Shady spots are rare on this trail, so keep that in mind if you're doing this during the warmer months. Luckily, this little kitty found a good shady spot to take a break. After about 1.6 miles, you will come to the fork that takes you to First Water. This is where you will begin the technical section. You might be putting on a little bit of a show as you change into your wetsuit because this is where a lot of hikers stop to take a break. Luckily, we didn't have anyone that was too shy in our group and soon it was time to start the technical section. To get to the first rappel, you're going to have to make your way about 15 minutes downstream. You'll be encountering a lot of class two scrambling both in and out of the water course. And we also encountered this really fun water slide. As we worked our way downstream, we heard what we thought was a raging waterfall, but it ended up being the sheriff's helicopter. Okay. They were obviously looking for someone and we were doing our best to wave them off and let them know that we weren't the ones they were looking for. It definitely made things a little bit more exciting with the raging winds, the leaves blowing all over the place and the sound of the helicopter. But eventually they got the point that we didn't need any help and they took off. After one more down climb, we came to this tree that some idiots had spray painted all over. And this is where you will find rappel number one. This rappel is fairly straightforward and it's right around 43 feet tall. We ended up rappelling down the left side of the waterfall on this one and besides being a little bit polished and slippery, it was pretty standard. I think that the simplicity of rappel number one is a great warm up for some of the more challenging rappels that we have coming up ahead. Almost as soon as you reach the bottom of Rappel 1, you are at Rappel 2. This one's anchor is tied to a log and it comes in at right around 37 feet. This one's a bit more technical and it's pretty challenging trying to avoid the powerful water that's being compressed through a tiny gap. If you hug the right down canyon side of the waterfall, you can slide down without getting pummeled too bad. If you go a little more to the right like On's doing, you can always treat it like a more standard rappel as well. After everyone in the group was down, we packed up and made our way over towards rappel number three, which is just another short walk down the canyon. Even though it's not nearly as short of a distance as it was between rappel one and two, it is a nice chance to enjoy the beautiful surroundings. And here we are arriving at rappel number three. This one was interesting because there were anchors both right down canyon and left down canyon. We set it up to go right down canyon, which is in the water course, and Franny bravely agreed to go first. I think she instantly regretted that decision because she got absolutely annihilated by the waterfall. After seeing that and making sure she was okay, we questioned our life choices and decided that the rest of us were going to go down the left down canyon side. 
Franny's face was pretty priceless as she watched us come down the much easier route. As you can see the left down canyon side makes its way down a log and then finishes with a small overhang. Unless you enjoy waterboarding, I would stick with the left down canyon rappel. From there we moved on to rappel number 4. Coming in at around 45 feet, this is the second tallest rappel in the canyon. This one is very similar to rappel number 1 in that you can stay out of the water course by rappelling down the side of the waterfall. And also like rappel 1, it has a fallen tree on the left side of the waterfall. This rappel finishes off by dropping you into a pool that's either thigh or waist deep. From there we moved on to rappel number 5 which was one of those that we had to do things a little bit differently because of the heavy water flow. We had to jump over the water course to go down the right down canyon side of the waterfalls so we got on rappel before making the jump just in case we didn't make it that way we didn't get swept over the edge. This one was a little bit tricky because it had a slopey angle that wanted to toss you right into the base of the falls. If that happens, you're obviously going to get beat up a little bit, so all of us did our best to avoid it. Most of our group made it through unscathed, but unfortunately An and Kim weren't so lucky. Both of them went for quite a ride and got a nice little drink of water. You're going to be going for a pleasant little stroll or scramble on your way to Rappel 6, which you can see right here. It's typically either a 30 foot rappel on the left down canyon side, or you can down climb it on the right down canyon side. Even though we did end up deciding to down climb it, we still got on rope just to get across the water course safely. I would highly recommend doing this if you're doing the canyon in class C conditions just because you don't want to slide all the way down and slam into the tree at the bottom. We are now approaching the halfway point of the canyon as far as rappels are concerned. After another nice little nature break we found ourselves at the top of rappel 7. The bolt for this one is located right down canyon and it's right around 43 feet tall. The water was flowing pretty good here but we were able to squeeze through on a narrow gap on the right down canyon side. If this waterfall was flowing much heavier it would definitely be tricky. But one interesting thing to note is that several members of our group said that this was the heaviest flow they've ever seen in this canyon. Rappel 7 drops you almost immediately into Rappel 8. This one is right around 30 feet tall and it seems like more experienced canyoneers could down climb this in drier conditions. Obviously those weren't the conditions that we were encountering on this day so we just rappelled it. It was pretty easy though. And we even made a little frog friend at the bottom. The majority of the easy rappels will be behind you at this point as the canyon ramps up on the technical, fun, and challenging side. Rappel number 9 was definitely intimidating at first glance. All we could see was pounding white water as we looked over the edge. Luckily as you round the boulder that's behind On right here, you get a little bit of protection from the torrent of water that's coming at you. I would definitely recommend hugging the right down canyon side as hard as you can because this is the kind of flow that'll rip your feet right out from under you. After finishing up rappel number 9 you will be going for one of the longest hikes in between rappels of this canyon. The scenery once again is gorgeous but you need to keep your eyes peeled because we spotted a ton of poison oak along the way. Luckily we were obviously covered pretty much head to toe so we didn't have to worry too much about it but I would definitely not want to get that on my face. On the way towards Rappel 10 we encountered more short slides, some beautiful waterfalls and a bunch of boulders that we needed to scramble up and around. 
It was also starting to become a little bit apparent that we didn't have a ton of time to waste. The sun was starting to get lower in the sky and we definitely did not want to be in this canyon in the dark. After passing through this beautiful little flower patch, we found ourselves at the top of Rappel 10. Even though this one is only about 25 feet tall, it is a little bit on the technical side because you have to make your way down this V notch. This one was one of V's favorites because once you reach the bottom, you get to see that the water is pouring off this giant boulder. This is definitely one of the most picturesque waterfalls in this canyon. If you can manage to stick to the wall that is right down canyon like Ana is doing right here, it will make your life a lot easier because you'll be able to stay out of the heavy flow. But obviously, some people like playing in it. You are now just another short walk down the canyon from Rappel 11. And the funny thing is that we didn't even realize it when we got to it, because Rappel 11 is only about 10 feet tall. You can see it right here and it is easily down climbable. Taking this route was super easy and it saved us a bunch of time. But the only problem was, all of that time that we saved on Rappel 11, we ended up spending on Rappel 12. Because of the heavy flow, we decided that it would be safest to send on across this pool to run a hand line. And a big shout out to Ken for volunteering to be the meat anchor. This gave us the opportunity to make our way safely across the pool and then get on rappel without worrying about being sucked over the edge again. This rappel is only about 17 feet tall, but in flows like this, it's always best to take all of the precautions. This one is quite simple and after it was rigged up, we blasted through it in no time. Once everyone was down, we had one last hiking section between rappels. After that, it was going to be all action until the exit hike. The vast majority of this hike section is pretty mellow. There's not too much technical rock scrambling or anything like that, and it's a great little break in the action. Towards the end of the hike, we came up on another water slide, and it didn't look like anything too intimidating. But it had a little bit of a secret. It had a pretty strong hydraulic at the bottom of it, and On ended up finding out the hard way because he got stuck in it. Luckily, our search and rescue superstar Franny jumped in there like a canyoneering version of Baywatch and yanked him out of it. The rest of us found a way to slowly work our way down the slide and then jump off the left side of it so we could completely bypass the hydraulic. With that nasty little water slide in our rear view mirror, we made our way over to Rappel 13. Rappel 13 is tiny, coming in at only 13 feet, but don't let it fool you. This little waterfall has a small pocket at the bottom, and if you're not careful, you'll step into it and get sucked right into the waterfall. In fact, I think that everyone besides Kim ended up in the waterfall for at least a little bit on this one. This is why it's always a great idea to wear a hat under your helmet in wet canyons. That way, if you tip your head down, it'll give you a little bit of a bubble so you can breathe while you're getting pounded on by the water. After we made it down Rappel 13, we were in the home stretch. We only had two Rappels left, but one of them was going to get a little bit wild. After a very short walk down the canyon, we came to the wild one, which is Rappel 14. The anchor for this one is located left down canyon up on a slab and it drops you 35 feet down into a pothole. During times of high flow, this is going to be a swimmer for pretty much everyone. There were a couple of spots where it felt like I could graze the floor with my tiptoes, but there was never enough to stand on. 
The water was absolutely thrashing here and it had no problem sweeping your feet right out from under you. It is absolutely critical that you send your strongest swimmers down first because they're probably going to have to help some of the weaker swimmers in your group. As some of the stronger members of our group came down, we had to figure out what the next step was. There is another small drop as you climb out of this pothole, and we weren't sure if it was safe to slide down or if we would need to repel it. Before On came down to join us, we had him let out a little bit more rope so at least a couple of us could repel down first to check and make sure if it was safe or not. After checking it out, we agreed that it was in fact safe to slide down, so the last couple members of our group did slide it. We only have one rappel left and it's about 30 feet from the end of the slide. This is another tiny one coming in at only around 10 feet. Aside from getting blasted in the face as you work your way over the edge, this one is really simple. The funny part is that there's actually a little divot in the ground about 10 feet past the falls and if you don't know about it, you'll think that you're done and you'll fall right into it. And with that, the technical section of Little Santa Anita had come to an end and all we had left was the hike out. We were pretty exhausted at this point. There are reports of this canyon taking three to six hours to finish, but with all of the extra stuff that we had to do because of the high flow, it ended up taking us closer to eight hours. The hike out is fairly simple, with the exception of a few spots like this. It's not a very long walk from the last rappel to the backside of the dam, but when you mix the exhaustion with the still heavily flowing water, it felt like it took a small eternity to get there. I know that at least I breathed a heavy sigh of relief when we saw the large concrete structure coming into view. The one thing about little Santa Anita is that she is a cruel little prankster. She gives you a small second to celebrate your victory over the canyon and reflect on what you just did before she shows you one last obstacle, this giant gate. It is locked and you will need to climb over it to get back to your car. Okay, now that you've climbed the gate, you can finally celebrate your achievement. This is typically where a video would end, but I wanted to make a little bonus section because it's not a straightforward route to get back to the car. At the bottom of the road that leads up to the dam, you need to make a right on Skyland Drive. The road eventually curves off to the left and becomes Fern Lane. One of the residents here was nice enough to leave a free box of lemons on the wall so you know V was stoked. Fern Lane eventually makes a left onto Fern Glen and then an immediate right onto Church Hill Road. And you're going to stay on that all the way until you get back to your car. Just a quick disclaimer, canyoneering is awesome but it can be dangerous. If you plan on running canyons, take a class or at least go with someone who is experienced. And for all the information about Little Santa Anita Canyon as well as other awesome adventures, head on over to thatadventurelife.com.